Hi, welcome to my video. I'm Jennifer Roberts. This is Theodore yeah. and you are at True Divine 44. This is where I put out the daily content um, that helps support, guide and inspire those who want to be supported, guided and inspired via the energy work that I do and the tarot work that I do um, to help you recognize the energies within, around you and within others to help you reach the highest potential of each and every day. Any likes, shares, subscribes and comments are greatly, greatly appreciated and much love, much love to I those know. who do that already. I appreciate you all. And if you so don't remember, I'm, uh, I'm, I got my my tooth still growing up. Good luck. Yeah, your tooth's still growing up. Yeah. Because just, look, yeah. so we're going to get on with the days. reading though, yeah? Quickly? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get on with the reading. Yeah, it just takes a few days. For the 30th of December 2020, um, take what resonates, it's general, and leave what does not. You can always book in for a personal reading with me privately or an energy work session or any spiritual guidance sessions uh, privately if you would like to do so at truedivinemedia at gmail.com or you can get me on my Facebook page at truedivine44. So for the 30th of December 2020, we have the lover's card. Hold this up. Number six, Major Arcana. You can see the balance of the divine feminine and divine masculine within there with this um, sort of archangel above them. Uh, it's the sun really above them that we're looking at, the Leo, the, the, the highest point in the zodiac, um, the sunshine, the enlightenment. Well, There's some kind of decision that needs to be made here, major decision in your personal life, um, particularly regarding where you're finding your balance in your physical reality. To have that, we have to clarify that we have the six of coins. So this is the balance of your pentacles, of your earth, of your reality, the giving of your time, the giving of your money, the giving of your resources, whatever that might be. Some of you, this major decision involves um, jobs, it involves uh, business ideas, it involves going forward or not going forward with a certain idea that will bring in um, the sustainability, the pentacles that you want or need to sustain yourself and your family. Um, it also speaks of major decisions regarding relationships uh, right now that there are a lot of people that will be It'll be being highlighted to them as to where the imbalance is, as to where the giving and the taking is within relationships. And some of you will be making the major de de decision, I can't, don't know why I can't say that word, to um, put in more effort to give more. And some of you will be coming uh, to the realization that there needs to be a, a rebalancing of the scales in the entirety. Either way, it is a big decision and it is part of you making it from a place of divinity and a place of balance. So we have the balance of the scales of the six of pentacles and we also have this need for the balance of the divine feminine and divine masculine within. Where are you making these positions and decisions from? Are they from a balanced place in the divine feminine? Um, are you um, being compassionate and empathetic to yourself first and the other person involved or the other persons involved if this is regarding business? Um, from your divine masculine, are you taking action where action is needed to be taken or is somebody taking action where they may be not taking action so the balance isn't there either way it's a balancing act but making sure that you're making it from a place of divinity and um, charging forward with whatever decision you make from a place of divinity is super important and will pay off for you in the long run absolutely um, we see here that this being a, a, a Gemini card of the energy of a Gemini's in particular, we see here that you, there's a need for a, a clear way of thinking, a, a clear thought process, um, and, and, and a very balanced thought process. But like Gemini's being the two sides, 
um, of the coin, the, the, the two different aspects, uh, looking at it equally, looking at the same place that you need to make this major decision from, um, looking at it from the equal, equally from both your divine feminine and your divine, as, divine masculine aspects. And so with the next card is the Queen of Wands. And this is where, um, this came up in a personal reading this evening. Um, this is where you see she's got this um this this sunflower this is a, a symbology of of peace wanting peace and tranquility serenity uh this energy is an energy that is um shy it comes across quite shy and quite reserved although once you get to know if you're allowed under the surface of this queen of wands there's this um fire and passion and creativity but it's not for all to see uh, there's this golden robe on it there's, so there's this enlightenment around it she she's a very enlightened energy uh, she does sit on the throne you can see that she has the black cat in front of her depicting the divine feminine energy the the substance that holds space and time for everything now for me this black cat is in front of the entry to her womb and we see that she has her legs open here with a rope draped across and this is where there is a need for some of you to make a decision from where you've been giving of yourself uh, from, from, from your divine feminine aspect or indeed if you're masculine taking of divine feminine without without the purity of heart, without the, the, the purity of, 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 of balancing frequency between the two. Uh, this is a divine place in this Queen of Wands. And some of you might need to do some healing here in this place of the womb, where there has been um, a place of you giving given of that sacred place to the wrong frequencies, to the wrong people uh, who haven't treated it as, as sacred ground, as a, a ground of creativity, as a ground of um, passion and love and compassion. And so a lot of you might be, it might resonate with you that you are very artistic and that you are very, um, able to create things that are beautiful and, and out of the box. You might have been feeling a bit of a block in this department. You might have been feeling that it's hard to create. Why? Because whoever this resonates with, you often create from the very womb um, that, you, that you feel your creations deeply, that you manifest them from that very place. That's where the seed of them is born. Uh, your ideas are born from this place of creativity, this chamber of, of, of full potentiality, unlimited potentiality the black dark womb on manifest in that it, you can never fully manifest it because it constantly, constantly is in creation. It constantly is in a, a shedding and creating the, like the phases of the moon. It is absolutely the phases of the moon reflected in the feminine, sacred feminine womb. In the, in the human, it, it's powerful. And so this block comes from a place for a lot of you that resonate with this uh, from uh, deeds and actions taken in the past that may have been abusive to both self, as in of giving of self too freely to the wrong frequencies or um, a, a taking by abuse particularly in childhood. And this is coming up and has come up in a personal reading also. Uh, it, and so it's something that needs to be worked through. And this block will disappear the moment you start working through this, because part of your healing will be you um, depicting and externalizing it in your artwork or in your type of creation 
in your clear work, whatever it is that you do that is creative and artistic, this is where your healing will be because you will absolutely start to release it into that work. And it will be a reminder of where you are powerful, where you sat on the throne, where you became a queen in this department, taking back divinity and sovereignty over this sacred creative space. And so with that being said, we have the hang, hanging dragon to clarify again. And this is looking at it from a, a different place, from a different perspective. And so if you think about it, the hanging dragon has this place and this space of enlightenment here where the head is, but instead of it being up where the head usually would be, it is in the lower regions. If we look at everything I've just described, a lot of that healing needs to take place in the lower regions. So you have the energy of this hanging dragon in your corner, helping you and guiding you through pushing you to bring your enlightenment into the very space that needs it most, into the very space that needs you to be able to look at this from a different perspective. The people who have brought this knowing of the need to heal here most recently have actually been a gift because they've given you a heads up as to where you need to bring the enlightenment, draw that light into the darkness so that you can truly transmute those things that have been abusive, limiting and blocking into something that is in flow, that is in creation, that is of beauty. And, and also, you know, it could be that some of you actually create something from this space that ultimately helps many others that will go through or have gone through similar circumstances to you, or that can even just relate to, the, to those circumstances. And so the next card is, let's see. Yep. What have we got here? We've got the Queen of Swords. Um, so the Queen of Swords, jump down and get that for mommy. So the Queen of Swords is this, uh, again, this Gemini energy. Um, Gemini may be Aquarius, but it's this air energy. It's this sword of truth. Um, it's this sword of wisdom, intellect. And it's a bit of, um, she's again, she's reserved. She takes a step back. You can't just approach this queen. There's, she has a frequency about her that is of, um, you need to be invited into this space. And so for a lot of you that resonate with this reading, this is a space where you may have to be um, in your wisdom and in your strength and in your intellect to know that you need this space and time. And you need to be able to feel free without guilt, because a lot of you are in that energy of feeling guilt when you're not in complete service to others at all times, without guilt to have that step back, to be able to have that space, to be able to have that boundary, that, that frequency boundary of, of you know, you, you're only letting in certain things because you need this time, you need this space. And it also is the energy that you can give to yourself from yourself in that to be truly honest with yourself. Because yes, other people can abuse us. Yes, other people can harm us. But it's always because there is a space within us that invites that in, in one way or another, in varying different levels, yes. But nevertheless, there's something that we can take ownership of. And this is where we move from victimhood into warriorhood, because if we can take ownership of it, we cannot um, control or change the way other people act but we can certainly control and change the way we act, which ultimately then, like this Queen of Swords gives off this, you know, be invited first, matey energy. It's because she's changed her frequency. And so actually people do make sure they're invited before they approach it. So you actually do, act by changing the way that you act, by being able to be honest with yourself as to where you let these energies in and why, um, to be 
in your or in your wisdom about this in your intellect and balance about this will actually give off that frequency that that allows you to stop inviting people in that will just take that that will cause an imbalance in whatever relationship you're in whether it's business or whether it is um relationship relationship now to clarify the queen of swords we have the hermit card you tired boy nearly done so the hermit card again coming up and this is where these two combined are excellent because the hermit energy you know holding that space and time to go within the darkest corners of self without fear just holding up again that light in the dark this is all about bringing light into the dark um this is where the queen of swords is great the hermit card holding that light holding that space and time for contemplation in the energy of the queen of swords within the energy of the hermit you start questioning yourself in those corners so when did i first feel like it was okay for somebody to treat me like this when did i first hear those words that made me feel as a child that that was okay when did i first ask myself the question is this okay or is this not okay when did i stop asking myself that question questions like this firing like the queen of swords would Firing those questions at you, getting the quick answers reveals it. You work your way down, you work your way back so with tired. those questions to in it to get to the seed. So then you find the seed of where this acceptance of such abuses and such imbalances came in. When you find that seed, you can dissolve that seed and you clear that ground with that hermit energy and create space for your creative juices to flow again, for you to be in flow again, for you to love self fully again, and to expect that from all of those in your divine inner circle. So it's a hugely powerful reading for those who resonate with it. Now on the bottom of the deck, we have the Six of Cups for the clarifying deck. This is speaking to things of the past that it has emotional connection that is deep emotional connection. Again, I don't need to go over that, asking those questions of where these seeds got in. That is what you are doing here. You are working through your waters to find the memory. Water holds memory. We are mostly made up of water. Therefore, we can go into our own internal records and look at the times and spaces where things got in and where we lost things because we, we, we have that record within us. Water holds that memory. Water can also be transmuted with frequency, with intent. And so when we find where that record, where that, that part of our waters within is holding that wound, that abuse, that limitation, that label, we can transmute it with intent and frequency. Underneath that, and I don't usually do this very often, but underneath that again is the lover's card. And so this brings you back to making this decision from a divine place. Where well, you've been making decisions based on your past before, so it's been blurred. This has been on top of it. You come into this reading ready and primed to make this decision for, for yourself from this divine place, from a balanced place. Enough is enough, a lot of you are thinking. On the bottom of the other deck, we have the Seven of Wands. Now, I just want to quickly mention this. <clears throat> this guy is defending himself. He has the one wand and he's defending himself against the six. The six from the past. Well, Things and people from the yeah. past that have not had the greatest intent for you. They've wanted to label and limit you. A lot of it out of jealousy, a lot of it out of feeling insecure in themselves that they are not as good well, as. And so they don't want mistake. to make you feel as good as and they don't like to see you rise. But you are on the upper ground here. Look. You are on the upper ground because you're the one ready to do this inner work. And so, but there might be people around you where you need to really harness this Queen of Swords energy, where you really need to harness and understand that it is okay for you to be um, demanding of what you allow and what you do not allow in your own inner circle. It is okay for you to be sovereign in that place. 
divine in that place without guilt. Because when people see you rise from a position that they've previously felt comfortable with you being in, i.e. the victim, i.e. less than, i.e. in lack, if they're not ready to do the inner work, they don't like it. Why? Because it holds up a great big shiny mirror to them that allows them to see that you are capable of doing this work. You are capable of unblocking yourself. You are capable of rising to the top. You are capable of being creative and beautiful and abundant. So capable. They don't like it. They want to attack. They want to pull down. They want to degrade. They want to um, get you back to that place that they are comfortable with you being in. But you're not going to do that because you have the upper ground here. Why? Because you have the inner standing. Why? Because you have your regular daily tarot girl telling you you're going to do this, that you're capable of doing this and you are worth doing this for. You are special. You are beautiful, you're abundant, you're creative. And if this resonates with you, from where, where you're feeling now today, from working through this inner work, I guarantee you, you're going to feel so different by the end of the day. By the end of the week, you're going to be transformed. By next week, you're going to be creating things that are so beautiful, that you're so proud of that you look back and think, wow, I'm so glad that happened. I'm so glad I broke that chain. So that being said, the end of the reading, little one needs to go to bed. I love you all very, very yeah. much. I appreciate you all being here. I appreciate all the comments and the family that we are building here. It's, it's super, it's just a pleasure and it's a privilege to, to be of service to you and to have you actually be a part of our lives, particularly in 2020, yeah, to, to have this favorite. be a part of the community and that you help me integrate my business, though personal readings are done privately and uh, any spiritual coaching or guidance is done so too. Um, but to be able to incorporate this and let the little ones know there's a wider world out there that isn't locked down that isn't shut down um and it's love and appreciation there it's actually been a really important part uh, surprisingly there i wasn't expecting this for our family um uh, as 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 a knowing of a community and so I, and from all over the world i appreciate you all Mwah. hi say much love Love. Stay balanced. Stay balanced. Stay whole. And um, if you remember, I'm a, usually my hand was bandaged up, but if my thing is like I'm healed no, now. No, but no. but like no, don't no, no. But don't ask in the comments what happened to it. It's been embarrassing to tell. <laughs> okay, I love you all. I appreciate you all. Bye. Bye.